It's Wednesday, November 25th, 2020. I'm making the pumpkin bread like I do every year. That's the recipe that I got from Cottage Living in 2006. So that was 14 years ago. Wow. Oh, you missed the sugar, but that's the flour. And that's the canola oil, which I just poured into the bowl into the sugar. I'm making two loaves. That's why there's two bowls. So I'm kind of doing it side by side. There's no reason to mix it together because they're each going to end up in a separate pan anyway. I'm a little bit blind these days, so I have to put my glasses on in order to read the recipe. That's what happens when you get old. Don't get old. Uh, so just to backtrack, it was one and a third cup sugar and then one third cup canola oil into each of these. And you just pour it in like that. And you wait until it all stops dripping or you cheat with a rubber scraper and uh, scrape it all out. So the next step is the part I never get because it's so specific. I have two questions. The recipe calls for one cup plus one and a half tablespoons of canned unsweetened pumpkin. So there's the pumpkin, there's the cup, and there's the one and a half tablespoons. So first question is, and I'm guessing this is right, canned pumpkin is not a liquid, it's considered a solid, I hope so, because I'm using a solid measuring cup. And then second question is, how on earth can it be so specific that you need exactly one tablespoon plus one half tablespoon on top of the one cup. I mean, this, how could this make a difference? I don't know, it's very strange. Anyway, those are my questions. Um, and I don't know that I ever got an answer. I could guess I could just Google it, but since the bread has been coming out fine the past 14 years, I guess pumpkin is a solid, which also would mean you can probably take it on an airplane because it's not a liquid. I'll try it. Here we go. There's the one cup plus one and a half tablespoons. Yep, sorry, Jason got the rose. Of course, they put him right next to Ed. There's some kind of feud going on. This is the Bachelorette. I forgot what season, but Claire's out and Tasha's taken over. Thank the Lord. Next step, feed at medium speed until smooth. Okay, that's enough. Uh, here's something else I'm doing slightly differently. The recipe calls for one large egg. I don't have any eggs. I decided not to buy any because I've got egg substitute. So hopefully this will work. And if it doesn't, boy, you're going to hear about it. So instead of one egg, it's three tablespoons of this stuff into each. I'll do it for real in a second. There's two thirds of the egg. There's three thirds of the egg. And here's the last tablespoon, which, sorry. Can I actually do this? I can actually do this. I'm holding the camera and the tablespoon in the same hand. Ta-da! And then I mix that. Now it's time to add all the dry stuff into the liquid stuff. There's one bowl, there's two bowls. I haven't measured the dry stuff yet, so I gotta do that. It's coming up. Oh, by the way, I'm using this rubber scraper, which is from Anthony P. I can't say his last name, one of the Queer Eyes from the current season. We went and saw him at, um, oh, that weird <laughs> theater. I think it's called Vinyl or something. It's on Peachtree, just north of the Banana Bridge on the left side. Uh, it was a fun night. And here's the dry stuff that goes in next. So it's basically, is it four things? I thought it was more. It is, yeah, the flour's over there. So obviously, uh, one and two thirds cup all-purpose flour, uh, one teaspoon baking soda, three quarters of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, doesn't have to be organic, obviously, a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, doesn't have to be organic, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, yum. And then the last thing is, here, here we go again, one quarter plus one eighth teaspoon of kosher salt. So that's one of these. And then I don't have an eighth, so I'm gonna have to like guess that it's half of this, just do that. Now it's raining, now it's raining. I don't, don't, I, don't shake sugar, it's okay. I gotta go check this out. Yeah, that's my new uh, foyer rug. Oh, what is going on? The day before Thanksgiving and it's pouring out? Nasty. Okay, Shigs, you wanna go in the, um, you wanna go in the butler's pantry and hide? Come on, let's go. Come on, Shigs. Let's go. Safe in here, come on. Sugar. Good girl. I can shut the door. There you go. There's your blanket. Oops. Don't crash into the wall. Okay. I'll just shut the door and turn the lights off. You can hide in here. Of course you won't. Sorry. Sorry for that diversion. Um, when it rains, sugar gets very scared. So the flour's in and uh, you just mix it. I'm gonna do these separately because this these egg beater spindle things are gonna get all junky and I don't wanna mix ingredients from two bowls. So you mix this in until it's nice and firm and then all the other stuff over there has to go in. And then I gotta crisco the bowls and pour it in and bake it. 
One teaspoon baking soda. Three quarters of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. One quarter teaspoon ground ginger. Coming up. Uh, last raw ingredient. Sorry, second to last is one quarter teaspoon of ground ginger plus one eighth of a teaspoon, which I don't have, so I'm just guesstimating. Hope this is right. There's a giant lump in there. Oops. Bye, Felicia. Oops, I just messed up. Don't tell anybody. The one eighth was kosher salt. It's the ground cloves is supposed to be one quarter teaspoon, so I messed that up, but no one's gonna know. So now the kosher salt is what I have to do that with. Um, basically a quarter of a teaspoon plus an eighth. And here goes the eighth of a teaspoon of kosher salt. The quarter of a teaspoon's already in there. Gradually dry ingredients beating at low speed until blended. Okay, I didn't really. Uh, next step, gradually add dry ingredients beating at low speed until blended. Um, didn't really do that, threw them all in at once, but it'll work nonetheless. Almost done. This is the uh, the nasty part. I was supposed to do this first, but I always leave it till the end. It's the uh, greasing of the pans with the Crisco, which I did not put a date on, so I have no idea how all this stuff is, but it doesn't smell too bad, not like motor oil. Anyway, you uh, stick your fingers in it and you kind of grease up the pan, and then you uh, dust it with flour so that the loaf of bread does not stick to the pan. Here are the greased and lightly dusted with flour baking pans. So all I gotta do now is pour the batter in and bake in the oven at 350. Yep, that's the mess in the sink. I can't stand messes, so see how neatly I've organized the mess so that it doesn't look too bad? Gives me agita. It'll be clean in a few minutes. Way, way, way too much pumpkin left. This happens every year, and then it just sits in the refrigerator for three or four weeks and gets moldy. But this time I'm gonna feed it to sugar because it's good for doggies when they have upset stomachs and she will love it. Uh, so the first one is scraped out and poured in the pan. That's what it looks like. You just kind of shake it a bit to level it out. I know it looks like it's only about, maybe not even half the pan, but believe me, believe you me, it rises when you bake it. There they are, the two unbaked loaves ready to go in the oven. And there's the mess they created. Still on the sink. Um, okay, so the recipe says bake at 350 for one hour and five minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. I think from experience, it ends up taking about an hour and a half. So we'll check on them periodically once they're in the oven. The hot oven before they go in, it's sparkling because I just cleaned it uh, before I went into the bubble. So hopefully nothing splatters out and drips because God knows I don't want to have to clean this again, even though it's self-cleaning. It's, kind of it's kind of a pain and you end up with ashes all over the place. The mess is all cleaned up, beautiful. There it is, the pile. Uh, so we have <clears throat> just about 31 minutes left. Wow, look at it, see, it's risen. It's all fluffy and you can see those fans going in the background. I didn't set anything special, but I think it is doing that whole, no, I didn't do convection cooking. So I think it's just doing what it normally does. So we'll check back in in a bit. So we're down to the last minute here, 49 seconds to be exact. And guess what? I don't have any toothpicks, so these matches will have to do. Um, anyway, part of the process obviously is testing for doneness. So you stick a toothpick in the middle and if it comes out clean, it's done. So they're nice and brown. Yep. Almost ready. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's such a beautiful noise. I'm really embarrassed, but I do have to show you how dirty my, they're not really dirty, they're just burnt oven mitts. Okay, so you pull it out and you stick the toothpick, or the match in this case, inside the middle and you pull it out. And you say, is that clean? That looks pretty clean. That's the cleanest I've ever seen. But I'm always worried. So what I typically do is, I'll just throw it back in the oven and turn the oven off and they'll stay warm just for maybe like five more minutes. You're almost there, but they look pretty well done. Nice. Time to hit the time for the penultimate step. That means the next to last, for those who don't know. Uh, you take them out of the oven and you put them on a wire rack and you let them cool for 15 minutes. So I gotta set the timer. We'll come back and see how they look. They should pop out without sticking at all. Which is exactly what you want to happen. Uh, I know that looks like the San Andreas fault, but it's not really. It's just a crack in the bread. They both have them. That's what happens. Cancel oven button. Ready? Do 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 do. Ironically, 635 is the number of the house I grew up in on White Street in Springfield, Mass. 635 White Street. She picked Ed. Except this Oh, no, already had one. Um. I'm sorry. Now receive a rose. Take a moment. Say goodbye. Make sure. What? That guy mumbles. Um. 
So the dude in the back, I forgot his name, that had the feud going with Ed, he's going home. Him. Didn't show his name. By the way, Noah shaved his mustache off in this episode after Tasha asked him to. Oops, I think the bread is ready. Yeah, I think I lost that footage, but basically I popped them out of the pan and they look wonderful. So not gonna cut them. Uh, hopefully we'll see them tomorrow when we eat them. Vlog is garbage. Sorry, my mouth is full. I finished this video and then I opened up another one and now I'm gonna go back to this. There's no sound, so it's crap. I'm gonna delete it completely. Waste of time. Here we go again. Yes.